Yeah, the comedy helps because I, I think I'm resilient and I'm tough and I don't let things get to me. You know, you get such a thick skin as a comedian and maybe that helps. Hello, welcome to another episode of Dan's Got Change with Briar Truck. A season 16 of the Dan Nichols Show rolls out. And if you go back several seasons, you might remember our current guest joining us alongside of Wade Van Kirk and cutting an equally athletic figure. He's a comedian who's got something of a roller coaster journey, especially over the last couple of years. Dave Levinson, welcome. Lovely to see you. Hello, Daniel. I was uh, I was thinking when I was uh, getting ready to chat to you the first time we met. I think you were at a stage where you were still working as a graphic designer. I think for Complete Golfer magazine and dabbling in this world of comedy and thinking about whether or not to give it a go. That's that's probably twenty odd years ago. That would be twenty years ago. Yes. So I, I think before that you wouldn't have known that I was uh, studying at Wits doing um, uh, what do you call it physiotherapy and human movement sciences. And that's what my original field of study was. So I would have been a PT teacher. How did you then end up in graphic design? The diagrams that I was drawing in that, phys- you know, you do anatomy and physiology and you do all those things. I was drawing, uh, doing great diagrams and someone said, wow, you, you can really draw really well. I'm like, oh, okay. And then obviously when you fail at university and you end up in the army, drawing skills don't really matter that much. <laughs> And then I decided to study graphic design. I became a magazine uh, designer. Well, I suppose an art director, you'd call it. And of course, while you were doing that, you were also starting to make a name for yourself into the world of comedy. I think a lot of South Africans got to know you from that famous M-Web Get in the Box advert with your white coat. Which and is quite it, interesting because that was an improvised ad, which is what I, I love doing. I love improvising. I don't like the scripted stuff, which you know. I, I do indeed, and it forms the hallmark of your comedy and the reason that you've got such a, an army of fans. Was, was it an accidental journey into comedy? There, it was almost a day. I suppose most comedians have got a story about how they get into it. Um, I was at a function and someone said, do you, want to do, do you want to try a comedy? So I said, I'll do it. They said, you can do five minutes. And after 25 minutes, the guy had to turn my mic off. <laughs> <laughs> it was that on Broadway. I don't know if you know... Um, in Cape Town, the old on Broadway at the bottom of Seapoint. And that was, it was an evening of comedy with a whole bunch of real comedians. But yes, I loved it. It's just something, you know, when, you, when, you, when you're doing it, you just feel so natural and you're like, hang on a minute, I can do this. But I come from a background of public speaking and debating and school plays and all that stuff. So I had, I had it. It was in me. And you do have a unique style. I, I love watching you when you when you hit your rhythm because I almost get the sense you're never entirely sure what you're going to say next, let alone anybody in the audience. But when you when you get into that zone, and I've seen you in a few times, there are a few people funnier than you, Dave Levinson. You you just get into that space where you absolutely rock. So I wish that I could do a comedy show with no one watching for like ten minutes, and then a curtain goes up, and I'm already kind of rolling. So I hate that first 10 minutes or five minutes of, of an audience going, what is this guy doing? So I wish they couldn't see that five minutes of where I've just got these blocks on the floor, you know, with different letters. Um, and then, then I open the curtain when I'm ready for it. Well, I mean, you and I come from a background of golf day emceeing. Your, your style is completely different to mine. <laughs> um, I treat a golf day as a comedy club, which is maybe not the right thing because it's more, more conservative, but I do love that kind of environment where there isn't, there's no rules, there's no script. We can just have fun. And it's something you love doing, but it's something that you weren't able to do so much of over the last few years as entertainment fell away in the COVID environment. And you somehow keep your chin up and your posts are upbeat and and you seem to be hanging in there as well as you can. But it has been a really tough few years for you, Dave. I don't like talking about it because I've, I've figured out that people don't like to hear your stuff. So if you say that, you know, as soon as the banks start phoning, my advice is to answer the phone because really that's going to be the highlight of your day. Banks, insurance companies, anyone that you owed money to, don't avoid them. So when I was sitting on my hammock, <laughs> because I had this in my house, when I was sitting in my hammock and I just thought, well, how do we get out of this? There is, there's no events. There's no golf days. What, we, we make money doing events. We, we MC events and we at comedy clubs and it just wasn't happening. So I kind of sat there for the first three months just wondering I didn't know what to do. I had no, I had no coach or mentor advice to give or to get. But um, 
you have to get yourself out of it. So the first thing is get rid of your lot, like get rid of those things. So you don't need get rid of the house, get rid of the car, start floating again. And they're just things, you'll get them back, you know. So that was my attitude. Like just get rid of stuff and get lighter. Get get less weighted down by stuff. Um, so all the stuff went eventually. And then um, then I started just speaking to people and just saying, Well, how are you getting out of it? You know, what are you doing? And that kind of got me out of it. But it was, it was dangerous. It was a dangerous time. And, and in terms of this this change in your life and, and, and dealing with it and and getting over the the mental challenge of this new space and uh, a space that a lot of people have had to negotiate, how, how difficult was that for somebody who I know to always be upbeat and quirky and fun? I'm glad you called you called me mentally challenged because yes, it's it's so strange because often you'll hear people say comedians are depressed. So they, they obviously use Robin Williams as an example. Or you hear that dentists are, are the most highly depressed of the generation. But it, it, didn't ever, it never occurred to me to have anything drastic in my life to go, well, I'm taking myself out or I'm going to just lie back. I've always been upbeat and said, there's got to be a way out of this. I'm too talented to do what I, what, what I love and I'm not going to let it get me. So I actually I met a guy just after COVID kind of had that little break. There was a take your masks off kind of thing. And I saw him and I said, how are you doing? He says, we're doing brilliantly. I'm like, what? What, did you, what do you mean you're doing brilliantly? I thought everyone was doing bad. He said, no, the property game is working because someone has to sell their house and someone has to buy a house. So I said, well, I'll come and work for you. And I was joking. And then about, a, I'd say a year later, he said to me, Dave, why didn't you phone me? You said you were going to come work for me and you never phoned. I said, no, I thought you were joking. So I started work that next week. He said, phone, phone my manager, phone my training officer. You're starting on Monday. And then that was kind of like a light. Because you, you, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. And that's the best advice I can give anyone. When you think you're in this hole, and it is a hole, how do you get out? You've got to just get a step ladder, and just as the further you get out of the hole, the more light there is. So you just, it, it feels like you're in a hole, which I was. The house was gone, the car. Um, they don't, I don't know if you've ever had a car repossessed. They come and fetch it on a flat, on a flat bed. And it's quite a, an emotional thing. You wave by to your car. <laughs> but I've got it back. How's that for a banana? <laughs> and you've got it back in part because of this new job. You are not just Dave Levinson, comedian. You are also Dave Levinson, estate agent. I see you recently sold your first house. Uh, and I can Thank imagine you. you actually being really good at this because you're charming and you're personable and, and it's a very different space, but when you've clearly found your feet in. Well, that's, that's the thing. Maybe having a sense of humor helps in life. So that when you, because someone selling their home might be emotionally um, attached to it. So you need that sense of humor to negotiate that, that feeling. You know, maybe it's, um, I don't know. And then someone buying a house is also emotionally wanting to do, wanting to up their life. So you just go between. So maybe having a sense of humor is, is the right way to go. Um, it is a very serious business, Dan. You've, you've bought property or sold. It's not as much, I don't think the comedy, maybe 10%. Because... <laughs> I've never done so much admin in my life. Like the, the learning curve, we have training on Mondays and Fridays. Can you imagine me? You know what I'm like, ADD. These trainers, they have a hard time with me, but it, it's, it's been an incredible journey just to watch like the growth of something I never knew I had. And then, now I'm selling homes and I'm good at it. <laughs> so yeah, the comedy helps because I, I think I'm resilient and I'm tough and I don't let things get to me. You know, you get such a thick skin as a comedian. And maybe that helps in, in, cause in, in, in this Remax business thing, you've got to phone people and ask them questions and they, they really do tell you to go away in a nice way. And you just got to pick up the phone and start again. So you my, my skin's already thick. So I, I'm ready for the, for the rejection. You just need that one call to say yes. Well, I, I tell you what, David. I've always uh, always admired you as a comedian and uh, and loved you as a mate. Uh, but what really, really inspires me is the fact that you've been through so much over the last few years, uh, and yet you're still smiling. You're still going strong. You've found a new space, and you've also given people the opportunity now, if they want to, they can combine a viewing of a house with a private stand-up comedy show, which is a a pretty cool option. So I think uh, I'm not going to do that. 
We are definitely. I'll have a little little stage with a microphone. Hi, welcome. That's the kitchen. All right. Well, look, Dave, keep going with it. Uh, the only thing I do hope is that in between selling uh, Gupta mansions uh, around the country is that uh, we will still see you on stage because as good as I know you will be as an estate agent, uh, Dave Levinson, the comedian, will always be my favorite. Uh, and we certainly hope to see plenty more of that. Thank you, Daniel. Cool. You can actually see me in a, in a TV show coming up, but I'm not allowed to talk about it. I'm growing my hair to look not like Elon Musk, just so you know. <laughs> All right. We'll keep an eye out then for Dave Levinson, the television star, Dave Levinson, the comedian, Dave Levinson, the real estate agent, but most importantly, Dave Levinson, the teacher of lessons in life. Dave, thank you. And we look forward to seeing you back on the show again soon. Appreciate it. Cheers. So there we go. Dave Levinson, one of my favorite comedians, one of South Africa's most genuinely funny people, and now proving a dab hand at selling property as well.